When I met Joanna Ray, I was 18, and I just moved here, and she was casting a Spielberg-produced show called Amazing Stories, and she brought me in for a lot of different episodes, and I never got one of them, and she just always kind of stuck with me, and I knew Eric, her son also, Eric DeRay, Leo, from when he was working with her, and so from what I've heard, David saw a headshot that I had, and it was... It was a headshot that wasn't even a professional headshot, it was just a friend of mine took a picture and it was kind of this really cool, artsy, more artsy than sort of glamorous shot. And so he called me in and um, I went in and uh, I remember when I walked into the room, Eric was there uh, greeting everyone and I talked to Eric and he said, man, isn't this amazing? And we talked to the script and I was like, yeah, the woman with the curtains and the curtain rods and all that and we were laughing about it. And then they brought me into the room and it was just a meeting with David and Mark and that at the end of the meeting he goes, now, now, uh, Bobby doesn't smile a lot. <laughs> and I said, oh no, no, I won't smile. I'm never going to smile again, <laughs> you know, because I always, you know, laughing and stuff. But uh, so I, that was the greatest, easiest thing. You know, we just went in to have this meeting and I didn't even read or anything. There was a, a fan on top of the building and this fan, it was like a, a vent fan, and you could hear it when it was really quiet. You could hear it squeaking and the sound guy was going crazy. And then, then halfway through the scene, it stopped. And so he needed some wild track of that squeak and we couldn't get it because it was off. So everyone was stopped and we were thinking, you know, what are we gonna do? And the sound, the boom guy actually had some rubber uh, tennis shoes on and he like started squeaking his foot on the ground. He goes, I think this kind of sounds like it. And everyone was like, yeah, that sounds like it. And so everyone just shut up and we had like, you know, 30 seconds of this guy just squeaking his foot on the ground, which I thought was so funny and so cool. And I've never seen anything like it, you know. I, I've done five or six movies up to that point. I've never seen anything so free, freeform and, and open to whatever was going to happen, happening right there, you know. It was like the rules were out the door. The relationship between Bobby and Audrey, I think it became a MacGuffin. I, I don't know whether they were really going to go with it. I thought they were definitely going to go with it. We had those moments, but they brought in the character that Billy Zane played. And as soon as he came in, they sort of took it that way. So that's why I think it was a MacGuffin or either a, a change of someone's mind or I, I don't know. You know, it, it, it was so on the fly always. The story kind of was flying. I mean, there was always the base, I guess. I don't really know how their minds worked when they were writing it, but I think that maybe things come up, though, as they go. They maybe didn't want to get them together. I don't know. Because I know at one point they wanted to get Cooper and her together. You know, they were working towards that, and it ended up not happening the way that I think they were thinking it was going to happen. But that's Twin Peaks lore. <laughs> it did show that there was this undercurrent of sadness and it's much like sort of blue velvet and you know there's like underneath the, the beautiful grass there's the bugs and the nastiness you know and that's that's what was interesting about Twin Peaks I think and, and really touched on something that now you know television shows today like Desperate Housewives you know very unlike Twin Peaks but in the sense that it's this pristine neighborhood and you have all these normal people seemingly, but underneath there's all this weird shit going on, you know? And um, I, I think that that was one of the first times that I'd ever, in my television watching experience, had ever seen anything like it was Twin Peaks, so. It was real, you know, it was real is what it was.